the mixed economy because pure capitalism is too cruel and pure socialism is too broke. Let's get into it. There are so many problems with poor command. A few men are one man in an office making decisions for the whole country, not allowing private businesses. And oftentimes this is a result of poor information. On the other side, if we let the market rule, there's no regulation. There's going to be so many demerit goods like drugs everywhere at super low prices, damaging the whole population. Then there's a free rider problem. If I and my neighbor wants a light outside our house on our street and I want to pay for it, but the neighbor doesn't want to pay for it, I won't pay for it because I don't want them to benefit for free from something that I pay for. That is a free rider problem and that's why public hospitals and schools would not exist. They'd only be private schools and private hospitals for the wealthy and there'd be huge gaps between the rich and the poor. So the solution, this mixed economy is the happy middle ground. Well done. So what about the definition then? We're using both private and public sectors for resource allocation. So on one side we've got the businesses having a bit of free reign, being able to produce what you want according to these laws of demand and supply. If more people want to buy it, demand increases, price goes up. If more businesses want to supply it, supply shifts forward and price goes down. It's very natural. So even though all these businesses have freedom to produce what you want, the government can employ some control. So think about gas, electricity, water. All this infrastructure is usually run by the government. This offers a certain degree of guarantees and quality, maybe. So if the market economy is total freedom and the command economy is total control, the mixed economy is the middle ground where you're free, but not that free. So basically what it's trying to do is trying to make up for the mistakes of the two extremes. So let's see how it does it. All these things that wouldn't be provided with a free rider problem, bang, you get them. Street lights, hospitals, free education in the UK, you all get it. But we also have the private sector with high quality goods, lots of choices and low prices, all fighting to get you as a customer. And the government steps in to control businesses. Think about drugs. They're going to regulate drugs. They're going to put laws on sales of them to protect the citizens. This is where the government believe you can't save yourself, so they save you for you. Okay, so disadvantages of the market system. Ah, uh, government inefficiency. In the private sector, time is money. In the public sector, time is just time. So government businesses are notorious for being inefficient compared to the private market. The goals between the private businesses and the government are always clashing. Private businesses want profit. That's arguably the single motive in economics. But the government thinks about taking some of that profit and redistributing it back to the people, essentially reducing that income and that wealth gap. So the government is supposed to focus on social cohesion, but the private businesses want that lovely, juicy, delicious money. There's risk of overregulation. The invisible hands can't work if you've got them in handcuffs. It might stop businesses thinking, I want to invest in this country. I want to do this. I want to do that. They might go somewhere else with a bit more freedom. A change in one government policy can ruin businesses overnight. And it's a fine balance between how much they intervene. Both sides are battling for power. And finally, corruption. What if you're a big producer and you convince the government to give you lots of taxpayer money to support you? So yeah, there are extremes on both sides. Do we have a government have all the power or do we let the free market do its thing? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Have a great day and I'll see you again.